If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. In order to find the electric potential at points A and B, we need to look at the formula for the electric potential produced by point charges. So the electric potential is equal to the Coulomb's constant multiplied by the charge divided by the distance. Now the distance will be from the charge to whatever point that we're interested in. So for example, in part A, we're trying to find the electric potential at point A, so the distance we're going to use would be the distance from the negative charge to point A, and also the distance from the positive charge to point A. Now, since there are two charges, we're going to have to use this formula two times. One time for the negative charge and another time for the positive charge. Now, the distance was given in terms of centimeters. We're going to have to change that to meters by multiplying that distance by 10 to the minus 2. Also, the charges are given in nanocoulombs, so to convert to the standard unit of coulombs, we'll have to multiply them by 10 to the minus 9. So we'll plug in the known values for the negative charge and also for the positive charge. Notice that for both calculations, we're using the value of 8.99 times 10 to the 9th, and that represents the standard value of Ke. We'll go ahead and plug these into our calculator. For the negative charge, we obtain this value. For the positive charge, we obtain that value. Notice the unit of both is volts. To get the total potential at point A, all we have to do is add the two values together. And when you do that, you get roughly 5394, 5,394 volts as the correct answer to part A. That is the total electric potential at point A. Notice that electric potential is not a vector quantity, so we don't have to worry about finding x and y components and looking for resultants and so forth. It's just as easy as just adding together the individual electric potential, so that's kind of a nice thing about electric potential. Now, for part b of the question, we're calculating the electric potential at point b. It's basically going to be the same thing we just did, except notice that the distance from the negative charge to point b is d divided by 2. Also, the distance from the positive charge to point B is d divided by 2. So we're just going to change these distances to 1 times 10 to the minus 2. We'll do it for the negative charge and also for the positive charge. Now, with that adjustment, we can go ahead and calculate the new electric potentials produced by the negative and positive charges. And we get these values whose magnitudes are larger, which makes sense because we are now closer to the charges. To get the total electric potential at point B, all we have to do again is just add these two values together. And when you do that, you get approximately 10,788 volts for the total electric potential at point B. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.